You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. We are here once again with another fresh episode for y'all. Just want to give a quick shout out to our listeners, everyone who's been supporting us. And I'm telling you, we always going to have some amazing guests on our show like we have today. We have a music artist, Irini Nomiku. And I'm going to just say this, man. She is going to give y'all a great story because I'm telling you, like, I had a good time reading her bio. And it's so long, I might take 30 minutes to read it. So I'm still doing that, man. I want her to tell the audience about herself. So, Irini, take the floor, Hello. man. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing awesome, man. Thanks for having me. Yes, ma'am. I was going to go back, way back in the day when we was born in 1997 <laughs> in Athens, Greece. But I, I just feel like you would do way more justice than I would do. So I want you to have the honors. Man, tell the audience a little about yourself because you are a music artist, but we're going to yes. learn way more than that. So tell the audience a little bit about you. As you said, I grew up in Greece, born and raised. Um, I lived there for 18 years. And then when I was 18, I went to the UK and studied music for three years. And after that, I moved to California, um, which I still did music here as well. Um, I just did like different stuff from what I did in the UK. Mm. Um, I've been playing music my whole life. I started with classical piano when I was like six, I think. Um, but I'm a singer songwriter and singing is what I love the most and performing in front of people and like sharing my music and my passion. Um, and um, I don't know, I've done a couple, like I've done a bunch of different projects and with artists and producers and songwriters um and i really don't know where like i always think about what's the best things that i've done but everything is so unique and different and i can't really choose from <laughs> from one like from all that which one's the best but yeah <laughs> i don't know um what else would you like to hear i mean Oh man, we gotta talk. Hear about we gotta talk about the UK my, experience, man, because you you went to B I M M University, UK. So I, yeah, what was it like, and what were you studying? So yeah, I went to British and Irish Modern Music Institute in Brighton, UK, which is not too far from London, um, and I did a program. I did my bachelor's actually mm -hmm. uh, in songwriting and vocal performance um i had such a good time really uh the the city is wonderful it's so artsy and like everyone is so open and loving and i guess that's weird for the uk <laughs> but brighton is different than the rest of the uk but yeah brighton is wonderful it's by the sea and there's so much music and arts going on. Like there's so many opportunities as well. Um, and basically I just did my three year bachelor's, graduated. And then, I don't know, I, I feel like the US and LA specifically was more appealing to me. Mm. So I just tried to come straight to here when I graduated from Brighton. What was it that made it so appealing? Like, what was it? Was it, did you know people here? I didn't know anyone here. Um, I had a few friends from Greece that studied here, but they didn't have anything to do with music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, in general, in Greece, when you talk about the United States and New York and Los Angeles, like the big cities, it's a huge deal. Yeah. And you hear so much about, so like in Greek TV, we have uh, American series and American music. So we get a lot of influence and news from the U.S. And it's kind of a big thing to go and travel and live in the States. Um, so I guess that's definitely one of the reasons that I wanted to come check it out and see what's all about. Um, but also, I knew that for music, 
it's LA is one of the best cities. And in Greece, although I love Greece and it's a wonderful country and it's wonderful to live there, the music scene is not that great. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to travel around and see what what's going on in the world and in other music scenes. <laughs> You as an artist, as a unique artist, what was it that made you say, you know what, this is something I actually want to pursue? Like, I seriously want to not make this a hobby, but actually a legit professional career. I didn't I, I, I don't think I ever had a point where I said, OK, that's now my job. <laughs> I love music so much and I love what I'm doing. Um, and it's the only thing that I want to do. <laughs> so I think that's what made me become a professional musician because from when I, since i was like 13 i would play in local bars and clubs and we would get paid to play there and there was like a lot of people coming to hear us um and that like i mean that was definitely the moment i realized that i wanted to do it and i wanted to keep doing it um but because it's what I love and it started as a hobby I've never had a specific day or like a specific time that I said okay that's my job now and I don't think I'll ever feel like that to be honest which is I'm not sure if it's good or bad <laughs> but to me music always felt like a hobby which also has come out to like make money that I make money out of how did you yeah. find your sound and like what styles of music are you really into creating? So I've changed since I was. So when I started playing music, I did classical piano. And then when I started singing, I was in a blues and rock band. <laughs> nice. And then I changed to jazz and then I changed to pop music. So I've kind of been through all of the genres and I love singing everything but right now the music that I write and the music that I feel mo most comfortable with and I enjoy the most is um, I want to say a mix of pop funk and jazz nice like neo soul ish but mm. more pop <laughs> you as an artist do you do music lessons and like workshops and stuff for people? Yes. Um, so I do piano classes. I have done, I have a couple of vocal students as well. And I used to host songwriting workshops in Greece, in Santorini. But I haven't been back home for a while, so I'm not sure when that will happen again. And but hopefully soon, hopefully soon. <laughs> what are some of your fundamental practices as far as how you're trying to help the student? Are you trying to first screen them and see where they are? How do you approach that? With every instrument and every skill that you're learning, there's different processes. Um, if it comes to uh, piano classes, I definitely do like a first lesson and talk to the students, see at what level they are at. Um, like try and figure out what they know, what they need to like work on. Um, and I kind of go from there because piano is the same thing for everyone. When you're starting, there's specific things you need to know and it's the same all over. Um, when it comes to vocal classes, there's so many different techniques and schools that you can follow. <laughs> um, so I kind of just start from the beginning with my students. Um, and I definitely want to let them, well, I definitely want to let them know what I am trying to teach them, but I also try to figure out what they already know and like if there's anything that they want to learn or they want to change. I chat, I, it's very important to adjust with the student and make them feel comfortable and make them feel like they're doing something that they like and it's not wasting their times. So the first classes are always like learning each other, trying to figure out where we're going mm -hmm. and like feel more comfortable and good with each other. Cause you know, not all people feel comfortable with another 
stranger in a room trying to teach them like stuff or watch them play i mean that's sometimes yeah, can be pressure them. i mean once again we are talking to music artist irini nomiku i hope i get that right it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> but what's some of the feedback you get when people accomplish their goals definitely people are surprised sometimes because it's not always learning skills and like being challenged all the time and like pushing yourself for me it's not that it's enjoying it and having fun with it and even like small tips like relax have fun breathe don't think about it so much yeah breathe like all these little tips that we forget they're so important and when you and when you have someone say it to you and you take it in and realize what you're doing hmm. i think like my students enjoy it much better so like they're surprised that with little tips that like that that they have nothing to do with music they feel like they're progressing as long as no one asks me to dunk a basketball then we're okay i can do everything <laughs> else though but if you ask me to dunk a basketball <laughs> i'm in trouble but uh <laughs> When you see how things have changed, crazy change with yeah. what's been going on with COVID-19, that, that has been a very hot topic in the music industry. You as an artist, how did it affect you when things basically sh were being shut down all around the world? And how have you mm -hmm. adapted to that situation? So for me, I think it was more of a psychological and personal um struggle because music wise i was really lucky because i had this um i won this um studio recording deal uh, with a studio in boston and they offered to um, record a full album for me so i had a lot of work going on in the beginning when there there was madness and everyone didn't know like what to do and how to handle the situation i was really busy working which was really good. Yeah. But then because the whole COVID situation kept going longer than we thought, um, it delayed us on a lot of stuff. Um, and I ended up not having work for a couple of months. And like, you know, I would try and like write music and work on my music, practice and all that. But you come to the point where you do that all day and you're like, okay, like how much longer? I, I need a break. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I felt at some point, I felt like I was not doing anything. I was stuck. I was stuck in the US as well because I couldn't go back home. And it was like overwhelming. Um, but I just, I just needed to remind myself that I'm lucky that I have the suit, the, the album recording that's going on and now that things are starting to reopen i'm booking gigs again and i have live shows and things are starting to roll again so it was just you know it was just that that specific time i think most of the people most of us went through it like most of us were fed up and bored and didn't know what to do with our lives at some point <laughs> That is very true. And to have that that focus to, you know, just keep keep it moving, basically, like you, yeah. you just you don't just settle. You just pick up the pieces and you, you try to make the best of what you have when exactly. when you see the opportunities now speed, speeding up to today's. We're starting mm -hmm. to see light at the end of the tunnel. A lot of people getting vaccinated. I mean, there's still question marks, but I mean, there's going to be question marks, I believe, until, you know, yeah. time is over. There's always going to be a question mark. Yeah. When you <laughs> see the opportunities ahead, where what are you looking forward towards the most when you are finally being able to perform in front of people when they hear you performing on stage? Well, I actually have a show on the 24th of June. So in a week, in exactly a week from today, um, it's going to be my first live show. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. I don't know. It's just so different because I did live streams this year, the year that passed. But it's not the same. You don't have the energy. You can't play on stage. Like, because 
when I perform, I look at the people mm -hmm. and the audience and I just play with them, whatever they are feeling and whatever they're doing that moment, I can pick on that and like do a joke or like look them in the eyes and perform for them or whatever. And the energy and the feeling that you get is so different from when just having a camera and recording yeah. a show. And yeah, if there's a bad connection, so, it's glitching on you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm definitely looking forward to having real people in front of me and sharing my music with them. Well, once again, if, if you've been sitting in the back, not paying attention, we're talking to the amazing music artist, Irini Nomiku. <laughs> you can go to her, her website, irininomiku.com. And if you don't know how to yeah. spell it, I can't blame you, but I'm going to do it for you. That's E-R-I-N-I-N-O-M-I-K-O-U.com. And that's a lot of eyes. But uh, <laughs> yeah. hopefully you get a lot of eyes at your uh, performance <laughs> on, you said, June 24th. Yes. Let's dive into that a little bit, because where is mm -hmm. that going to be? And what time and how can they get tickets if it's not too late? Mm -hmm. It's going to be at El Cid in Los Angeles. The doors open at 5 p.m. You can get tickets at the door. Just say my name and they'll give you a ticket. Nice. Or you can go um, online. If you go to my website um, you or my Instagram page, you will find a link for Eventbrite and you can get tickets from there as well. Tell us about some of your recent projects. So literally the, for the last year, I've been working on my album nonstop. It's not out yet, but it will be, I hope, in September. Mm -hmm. um, the album is called Anthropolection, and it's a collection of people that have been in my life. All the songs have to do with people that were or have been or are in my life and they're important to me um, and our relationships that we had and all that um, and it's going to be a seven song album there's already a recorded a fully recorded song it's called mister and it's our single that will be released probably before the album but we we're still talking about all the specifics and all that mm -hmm. so i don't want to say anything and then not do it right but yeah that's what i've been working on for the last year but if you go to my website you can see like all of the projects that i've done in the collaborations one of my favorite is the one i did with prague's philharmonic orchestra and we did like rock music with classical instruments um and it was a great like great covers so so much fun to work with them um my friend ty he is a spanish hip-hop artist hmm. um, and i did vocals for a, a few of his songs as well which are pretty cool um what else there's so many so many friends that I have done vocals and harmonized their songs. Um, but everything is on my website. It's a bunch of different genres from like singer songwriter to rock to, I don't know, a more like EDM, mm -hmm. uh, electronic music. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you can definitely check it out if you go to my website and press on music. When it comes to memories, what are some of the things you remember a lot about your culture, man? I want you to talk about your hometown. In Greece, the culture is very much focused um, on um, religion. Although I'm not that religious, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I really like the traditions. And I want to say like one of the things memories that i have are mostly like easter vacation that we you know we celebrate easter or whatever and we have this tradition that on the sunday of resurrection i don't know if that's how you call it here but that's how we call it in greece mm -hmm. <laughs> the sunday of resurrection like we have this huge feast 
and play Greek traditional music and eat a lot of food and dance and like have the whole family and friends gather together. And that's definitely one of my favorite times of the year when I'm in Greece. I love Greek traditional music. If you don't know about it, you should definitely check it out. We have this instrument called buzuki. And it's something like a guitar, but it's not exactly the shape of a guitar. I don't know. I don't know if there's an equivalent or like something similar to it that I can describe it. Um, but I love the sound of the buzuki and You know, when you go to a small, like, taverna, like a restaurant or like a... Uh, so we have a lot of tapas, like Greek tapas kind of places. And they usually have Greek live music. And it's just a guitar and the buzuki and maybe a violin. And it's so warm and it fills you up with love. It's so nice. I don't know. I've really missed that. I've really missed that. <laughs> Do yes. you know who you mm -hmm. would want to work with? If someone was to call you in the next 24 hours and said, Irini, know me cool. Mm. I want to work <laughs> with you. Um, <laughs> what would your response be? And who would you hope would be calling you? Oof. Mm. If you can do anything think, with anybody. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't be know. There's so many people that I want to work with. So. I'm obsessed with this new band. They're called Lawrence the Band. Mm -hmm. And they're super groovy, funky, pop. Exactly what I am. <laughs> so I would definitely want to like open for them or go on tour with them. Um, I mean, Quincy Jones, he is the man. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I would be honored if he wanted to work with me. Um What else? Snarky Puppy, Wolfpack, like all of these more jazzy, neo-soul, funky music bands, musicians, artists. Like mm. they're all people that I really want to work with. And I don't care if I'm going to write music for them, if they want to write music for me, tour, uh, play music, just jam, whatever it is, I'm down. <laughs> What would you like to tell the audience and... How can they keep in touch with you online? Yeah, if anyone wants to keep in touch and like follow me on Instagram, Facebook, my website, you can subscribe to my website as well. Uh, don't feel hesitant to text me or DM or email me. Um, I try to answer to everyone um, and I'm always open to listening to what everyone has to say and i love talking <laughs> and having conversations with people and connecting so yeah don't forget she has a amazing opportunity june 24th yeah i did not forget yeah. june 24th you can get your tickets if you're out in la if you're gonna be nearby tell your friend tell a friend tell a friend if you love music and <laughs> if you're into what irini Nomiku is doing then go support it that's june 24th go to her instagram or her website is right there in her instagram bio or you can find that information on her website you need that website i can spell it for you real quick that's e-r-i-n-i-n-o-m-i-k-o-u.com that's irini nomiku And it's been a great time talking to you on I Henry Focus Radio. <laughs> And thank you for your time, man. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And like we say on every single show, man, y'all, you know the drill, man. Keep God first, <laughs> stay focused, and peace. Peace. Hey, it's Shamai Reed with I Am Refocus Radio. Make sure you go to IamRefocusRadio.com to listen to today's episode. Once again, like we always say, keep God first, stay focused, and peace.